Hi, this is Karen Ann Harlos. Most materials used are available to the general public at lpedia.org, particularly the LP News issues, which are archived in full. Other items used may be things purchased by me for my personal collection, but I am more than happy to make any of them available as well to any researcher. All party items are public. If you found this disclaimer annoying, you can thank some salty bitches in Colorado. When President Nixon was flying back from California in 1972, the day of the election, he was asked by the journalist Teddy White to name the most significant turning points in the campaign that led to his landslide. The first thing he said was the day Wallace was taken out of the race. But Wallace was also considering another political option at the Democratic Convention. In 1972, Hubert Humphrey and George Wallace had an understanding that Governor Wallace was going to be the a vice presidential nominee and Humphrey was going to be the presidential nominee. But things didn't work out that way and Wallace returned home to Alabama to recover from his wounds. The foremother of the American hairless terrier was born in 1972 in a litter of a perfectly ordinary average sized rat terrier. Okay, so let me know if my sound is okay. I've been having a bitch with sound today and I don't know why it, it interrupted the stream because I unplugged a set of headphones. How ridiculous is that? But here we are, and I hope you enjoyed that little montage at the beginning. It actually turns out not that much happened in August of 1972 in general um, world history, American history, but maybe the two things I found the most fascinating, you might not. That fucking meteor, man, did you see that thing? They didn't see it coming. Now listen to how scary this is. That was a, an actual meteor. It passed within 35 miles of the surface of the Earth. 35 miles. That was filmed from Canada. People just looked up and were like, holy crap. They had no idea this was coming. And if it had hit the Earth, it would have been the equivalent of two nuclear warheads. So in August of 1972, we were almost had a, a dinosaur moment, okay? Imagine that, 35 miles within the surface of the Earth. I think astronomically, they think anything within a couple hundred thousand miles is a close call. What do you call 35 miles? That really was almost the sweet meteor of death, August 1972. Also... The, if you remember a couple months ago, we dealt with the attempted assassination of George Wallace, which really changed everything for that presidential race. And from what I understand, very rapidly, the attempted assassin was convicted in August of 1972. I don't know if I understood that quickly, because that's awful fast. So, but... I showed you that Wallace, from that little clip there, Wallace was still hoping to be the VP nominee, but that's because he thought Humphreys was going to be the Democratic nominee. And as we'll learn with today's issue, that was not in fact the case. It ended up being McGovern. And just of a personal interest to me, because I've always loved this breed, August of 1972 was one of the very first American Hairless Terrier was born. It's a brand new breed. I did not know that. They are the coolest dogs and they feel like so silky soft. I would love to have an American Hairless Terrier. So that also happened in, 18, in August of 72. The meteor and the dog, those were the two things that were most important to me. I threw in the Wallace clip because I figured we better talk a little politics. Though the meteor was pretty political, it could have ended everything. So I found that very interesting. And I thank you everyone for your holiday wishes. I hope you also had a good Christmas. 
Wayne and I actually went not out of town. We went like to the next town. We went to Colorado Springs, rented a hotel room just to, to get away. And it was like not fancy hotel room because we don't, you know, we're kind of broke right now because it's a really old hotel. In its heyday, it probably was fancy. But it was this two-story hotel room. I've never seen that before. It had like a loft and this giant ass tub. You could fit 10 people in this tub. I did a video of it on my Facebook page if anyone is interested. It's at the Hotel Elegante in Colorado Springs where we once had an LPCO convention. So that was fun and we just came back in town and we had the dogs with us. So that was good because we had to keep an eye on Skippy who um, yeah, had to go to the emergency vet the night before. But he's good now. Antibiotics, he's good. Vets are freaking expensive, though. That was an expense I did not expect. I'm glad I have care credit or we wouldn't have been able to afford it. So we're going to get into the issue of LP News, August 72. It's actually, in my opinion, one of the less exciting um, LP News that we've gone through. Maybe it's just me. Um, it also seems a little shorter to me. But... Maybe when I skimmed it, I didn't have a good perspective. So let's pull this up. Come on now. There we go. And I want to see if I'm going to be able to forward these uh, pages. Just give me one second. I should have thought about that. Previous scene. Yes. Okay. Got it all set up. And uh, David Davis says, the turning point of the election was the Canuck letter. I do not know what that is. So I'll need to look that up because I really am trying to learn everything that was going on at that time politically. And during the stream earlier on the People's Party, I screenshotted it. I'm not sure who asked the question. I don't think it was you, David. Um, there were two Davids in chat. I think it was the other David. Asked something about the law of the sea and something about a papal bull that was used to seize land from the American Indians. Um, I'm going to look into that and answer that at a future stream. I just wanted to, if he ends up watching this, to know that I saw his questions, but I was running late to do this, and I couldn't answer him at the time. So, let's get into it. August of 72. And I just like bringing this up. The national headquarters up there in the left-hand corner is still, how, how do I do left hand? Nope, wrong hand. There you go. See, I have to figure it out on the screen up there in the left hand corner. So the, the national headquarters is still David Nolan's living room. It's the eighth issue, which is why this is the eighth episode. And as you can tell, it was $3 a year. What a bargain. Okay, so LP to run six back three. It's our very first election season. And we're going to go through this. So it says, in addition to supporting the Hospers Nathan ticket, which, as we learned, were nominated at our convention, LP organizations in various states are running or supporting a, where did I left this off, a total of nine candidates for lower offices this year. It doesn't seem like many, but they just started, so I guess that's pretty good. Six of the nine are running for Congress and three are seeking seats in their respective state legislatures. Because remember, there was also ballot access issues. So considering this is the month after the first convention, which was only six months after the party founding, and the party didn't research itself for years to found, unlike the People's Party, which I'm paying attention to, they started organizing in 2016 and they just kind of like officially formed now. So they had four years of prep. You want how much prep the LP had? Two months before they were an official party. They started talking about it in November, formed the committee to form a libertarian party in December, and then were formally a party in January. Or was it December? No, actually it was December 11th, if I'm correct, somewhere around there. So really, really fast, less than a month, I think. Okay, so continuing. All nine are hardcore libertarians, although only six are running under the LP designation, ballot access. If you live in one of the six states where these candidates are running, your support would be greatly welcomed. If you live in another state, you might pick one or two of the nine and send a campaign contribution. 
that period's in the wrong place, David Nolan. That is not two independent conjunctions. So, if, I mean, not period, comma. I am a comma Nazi. Bugs me, but I'll get over it. Here, on a state-by-state -state basis, is a brief rundown of each of the nine candidates. If you'd like more information, write to the candidate's campaign headquarters. So, New York. And here's, those of you from New York will know this, but a lot of you will not. So it says New York, the New York LP officially called the Free Libertarian Party. Someone from New York's going to need to fill me in because I forgot why they had to do that. Because I think maybe the name Libertarian Party was already taken. I, I don't know all the issues, but for a long time, well over a decade, they were called the Free Libertarian Party. It might have even been two decades. And it says for legal reasons is running two candidates and backing a third. And here are these candidates. Uh, Gary Greenberg, never heard of him, um, but I'm sure some of you have. A well-known libertarian activist is the Free Libertarian Party's candidate for Congress in the 18th District. Oh, I love this. We used to be so ballsy. Gary's stands include a call for the legalization of heroin. He didn't fuck with pot, man. He went right to heroin. As the surest way to reduce crime, I guess there was a heroin problem then. I mean, a big one for that to be his main thing. And an immediate withdrawal from Vietnam and reparations for draftees. Never heard of that before. To be paid by the politicians. I love him. And government officials responsible for the draft. Holy crap, I love him. As of press time, it appeared virtually sure that Gary will be on the ballot. And I doesn't say whether he was running as an, a libertarian or had to run separately. And then it gives his address. Care of Lazy Fair Bookstore. So was he maybe the publisher of that? I don't know. Now here's someone we all know. Walter Block, publisher of Outlook. I did not know he was the publisher of Outlook. Is the FLP's candidate for state assembly in the 65th assembly district, which lies within Gary Greenberg's congressional district. Walter stands on local issues include calls for the abolition of rent controls, deregulation of transportation, and opposition to moves to repeal New York's liberal abortion law. He also favors New York City's secession from New York State. And it gives his address, which is also care of laissez-faire bookstore. So I did not know Walter used to live in New York. He now lives in Louisiana and um, teaches at Loyola. And something a lot of you might not know, um, Roe versus Wade was not passed yet at this time. But New York still had legalized abortion because it was surely a state issue then. A lot of people think abortion was completely illegal prior to Roe versus Wade, and that's not the case. Continuing, Guy Riggs, a party member who had already filed his assembly candidacy in the 90, 99th Assembly District, Poughkeepsie, under the individual rights label. So I guess that was a party then. I'm going to have to look that up before he heard of the LP, and he's also being backed by the New York party. So I'm guessing since they mentioned that Guy was running under a different label, that Walter Block and Gary must have been running under LP, which means ballot access used to be much easier in New York. Guy's statements call for repealing laws rather than passing new ones, zero tax, and a commitment to zero tax growth and it gives his address. So, three people running in New York. Now, Colorado, woo woo. The Colorado LP is fielding two candidates this year, both of them members of the original group of eight people who founded the National LP. You know, be I'm gonna look this up now. I was gonna say before we finish, I think I have the names on Elpedia of all of the eight people. I should have looked this up before, but I don't know why I didn't think of it. So let me pull up the committee to form. I'm just on another screen here looking it up so I can tell you. Committee to form 
a libertarian party. I think that's what the committee was called, but let's see. Committee to Organize the Libertarian Party. So the original eight members were Pip Boyles, Hugh Futch, John James, Dale Nelson, David Nolan, Susan Nolan, Eric Wrestling, and Luke Zell, just in case you guys wanted to know. So out of those eight, surprisingly, Gary didn't run, but Hugh Futch and Pip Boyles. I looked up Hugh Futch before the show. He unfortunately died in 2018, a year after I joined the LP, and I wasn't so far into history at that time. I wish I had had a chance to meet him because he lived in Castle Rock, where I live. So I missed it. Missed it by a year of getting to meet him. So let's talk about their two candidacies. And I think Pip Boyles is also deceased, but I've been having problems tracking him down. It's an unusual name. You would think it wouldn't be so difficult. So Pip Boyles, treasurer of the National Party and chairman of the platform committee at the LP convention in June, is running for Congress in the new 5th, fifth congressional district. In his public speeches, Pip has been comparing the 20th century welfare state to the feudal system. And this was in the 70s. Pip will definitely be on the ballot. Colorado has had easy ballot access. Hugh Futch is laying plans to run for the state house in the 11th district. His campaign will include support for a ballot referendum to cut off state financial support for the 1976 Olympics and another to allow a privately run lottery which would reduce the tax load in Colorado. Okay, so two in Colorado were running. Illinois. The Illinois LP has filed petitions with 6,000 signatures, 5,000 required, to place Paul Stout on the ballot for Congress in the 14th District. Anyone from Illinois, is that the same requirements or has it changed? I would be interested. Paul's strongest stands are, got itch, sorry, in opposition to the draft and to anti-abortion laws, comma, is in the wrong place, Mr. Nolan. In his campaign speeches, typo, <laughs> I know, I'm terrible, uh, Paul stresses that a government is more of a hazard to the individual than any other individual could possibly be. That is great. I love it. And it gives his address. And although Cal now we're moving to California, we're not literally moving to California. They're all moving to Colorado. <sighs> we're going to build a wall and make California pay for it. Although we have no details as of yet, we have been informed that Manny Klausner, one of the editors of Reason, will be running for Congress in the 27th district on the LP label. His opponent on the Republican side will be Barry Goldwater Jr., who has been steadily drifting towards collectivism since he was first elected four years ago. Manny hopes to force him to reverse this trend. Okay, and in Idaho, Stephen D. Sims, a libertarian, won a strong victory over his two better-known opponents in Idaho's GOP primary on August 8th, getting nearly as many votes as both of them combined. So obviously ballot access was an issue and he was running as a Republican. As the candidate for Congress from Idaho's first district, Steve has been using LP literature. The Republicans must have loved that, but they probably thought we were just some pipsqueak back then. Well, we were, but... They probably had no idea we would be around 50 years later. So many third parties come and go. As the candidate, oh no, I said that. Um, his theme is take a bite out of government. His literature shows an apple with a large bite missing. Apple computers didn't exist then, did they? I don't think so. Steve is an apple grower. When was Apple computers formed? That'd be interesting to know. Continued on page three. So let's skip page two and go to page three here just to continue these candidates. So let me put this forward. 
to page. Is that it? No. Yeah, progress report. Okay. Candidates from page one is down there in the bottom. Massachusetts. The still tiny Massachusetts LP is concentrating its efforts on supporting the candidates, candidacy of Abby Nelson, an objectivist who is seeking the GOP nomination for the 3rd Congressional District. If he succeeds in obtaining the nomination, which he is expected to do, his Democratic opponent will be Phil Drynan, the ultimate mystic altruist collectivist. <laughs> Remind me, don't let me forget. Apple, so Lindsay said Apple was formed in 1976 because they probably would have sued this guy for that logo if they were around in 72. Okay, Avi, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, let me look this up on Elpedia because there was an Avi who was a reporter in Colorado, I believe, that interviewed David Nolan. And I'm wondering if it's the same Avi. No, different Abby, I guess. Um, that's kind of an unusual name, isn't it, though? It makes me a little suspicious that maybe my search isn't good. Well, I'll have to look it up, but there was an Abby that in Colorado later on interviewed David Nolan, was a libertarian, then ended up turning on the Libertarian Party. And he gave me his original tapes they're on Elpedia <clears throat> for all the salty bitches in Colorado who say that I'm using material that's not available to the general public. Um, it is, you could look it up. I believe it's called Interview with David Nolan on the Formation of the Libertarian Party. The recordings are there. And his name was Avi, but I guess it wasn't Nelson. That's really starting to make me curious. Pardon me while I look that up because you know my ADHD will just be freaking out. So let me look up formation of the Libertarian Party. If I can't find it quickly, I'll give it up. But if I can, ah, I'm not finding it quickly. If it's the same Abby, I will do a bonus episode run and play that interview. But you know what? That might be a nice bonus episode, whether it's the same Avi or not, because David's talking about the formation. We're dealing with the formation, right? So, yeah, I think that will be a bonus episode where we will listen to and comment on that interview. Let me know what you think. Okay, so that's it of the continued from page one. So now we can go back one page. I don't know why they do that continued why did they just continue on the next page? It was just another paragraph. That's annoying. Okay, so let's go back to page two. It won't go back to page two. There we go. Okay, campaign news. There we go. So this is talking about the national ticket. In the two months since Dr. Hospers and Mrs. Nathan, notice nobody ever says Mrs. anymore. It would have been Ms., but you can tell this is before that were nominated, a lot has happened. Dr. Hospers officially kicked off his campaign in Los Angeles on July 4th. A copy of his speech upon that occasion is enclosed. I don't have that. It might be separated from the newsletter and I'll find it at some other point, but I don't have that for you right now. I would love to have that for you. As a result of this speech, which was well covered by the media, he was invited to appear in numerous radio and TV programs and was interviewed by several magazines. Dr. Hospers also spoke by speakerphone to a press conference held by the New York LP on July 4th. At that conference, the New York crew introduced his local candidates, put on a guerrilla theater presentation. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm picturing a bunch of guerrillas. <laughs> Rest in peace, Harambe. But I'm sure that's not what it means. <laughs> okay. That just gave me a weird mental image. Uh, got excellent coverage on radio, TV, and in the New York Times. I'll have to look up that New York Times stuff on newspapers.com. Dr. Murray Rothbard appeared 
at the conference as Dr. Hosper's economic advisor. Meanwhile, Tony Nathan was receiving similar coverage in Oregon. At one point, a, repo a reporter told her she was doing such a great job, he wouldn't be surprised if she could win in Oregon if she got on the ballot. As of the time this newsletter goes to press, it appears <clears throat> likely, let me, got a frog in my throat, ribbit. Mm, when it's uh, so cold in Colorado, the furnace really dries out the air. So it appears that the Oregon LP will succeed to get on the ballot by getting 1,000 registered voters to attend a state nominating convention. They got to get 1,000 people to attend a convention. We're lucky if we could do that at national. Most recently, Tony spent 10 days on a trip from Oregon down through California, arriving to meet with Dr. Hospers in Los Angeles for a very successful campaign dinner, attended by nearly 100 people and for several joint appearances. On her way to Los Angeles, she received excellent media coverage of her appearances, which included a speech at Berkeley. I'm wondering if this campaign dinner, we're going to tie some things in together. If you were listened to the last episode I did on the statement of principles, actually, when I told you how I came into a uh, came into possession of the original, and I said it was hidden behind a photocopied framed photo of Ayn Rand in the house of the Gottliebs in California, the daughter told me she remembers a campaign event held at their house for this campaign. And I'm wondering if that's the event mentioned here. Wouldn't that be cool? I'll have to see if the Gottliebs live in Los Angeles because that's where it says this was. Interesting. I'm going to look up on Elpedia here. I don't know if I have an article on the Gottliebs, but let me look. If they were in Los Angeles, I bet you we just connected some dots here. Let me see here. Uh, nope. I'm not finding where they lived. I have the note here from the daughter, and I don't think she says. Yep, I think it was. Check this out. Here is the note. I'm going to read it because I, I don't think I could put it up on the screen easily. Well, I don't know. Maybe I can. Let me try. If I can't, I can't, right? Let me see if I can put this on the screen because this is super cool. Share screen doesn't seem to be doing it. Oh, that's because the scene is locked. Hold on. Let's try it again. Primary display? No. Nope. Tertiary display? Nope. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, I see what the problem is. Hold on one second. I think I need to turn off these overlays. If I turn this off, turn me off. Wait, hold on. Turn that back off. Now, let me see if I can share the screen now. Primary display. There we go. Yay. Let me get me out of the way here. Okay. So she says, I'm more than happy to tell you about it. And the it is the um, origination of the original statement of principles. My mom, Shirley Gottlieb, ran the Libertarian Party office out of her home in the 1970s. My mom and dad had many meetings at their home and came to personally know Dr. John Hospers. I remember being in high school and coming home to a house full of people in the living room. My mom recruited me to go to downtown Los Angeles to help count votes when the party was trying to obtain state ballot access or ballot status, excuse me. I did not even know that my parents had it. 
I had been going through the house after my dad's passing in March. I lost my mom in 2005 and came across a picture frame containing a black and white photocopy of Ayn Rand. It seemed odd to me because it wasn't even a photo, more like a photocopy, and I couldn't understand why they would have framed it. When I took it apart, I found the document you now have. Isn't that awesome? I bet you they weren't, they weren't involved in, until 73. Huh. Okay. Well, interesting. Um, I'd like to confirm that though, because we had more conversations with the daughter and she says that she remembers a campaign event for Hospers and Hospers ran in 72. So unless he ran, no, he wasn't from California. So was he? No. Was he from California? So, cause maybe he ran for something else at a later time. We'll have to investigate this, Michael. Um, you, oh, the world famous, you were the founding chairman. So you would know. I'm not going to doubt you. I'm sorry. I doubted you just trying to figure it all out. See, I love when people come into comments that have this information. Okay. So let me stop my share if I can. Um, well, I know one way to stop it is to turn back on all these overlays. Right. And here, here we go. Now I just need to put me back up. Why did that not work for me properly? Let's try this again. Here we go. Here I am, right? Put me back over here. Let's get the LP news back up if I can. There we go. Okay. Go back to page two. I'm learning this program guys. Okay. Where were we at? Okay. It looks like it's going over to that second column. So he ran for governor in 74. I think you solved it then, Michael. That must be the event she mentioned because she didn't mention Tony Nathan. She, I made an assumption that it was the Hospers Nathan thing. She only mentioned Hospers. So I think you solved it, Michael. All right. So to continue, and this is just the beginning. To take advantage of the tremendous potential for spreading libertarian ideas, both of our highly effective candidates have agreed to make national tours. In September, Dr. Hospers will be spending a week visiting seven states where he will make public speeches, hold press conferences, and meet with leading libertarian activists. And it gives some dates and locations. We're not going to read all the dates, but the locations were Dallas, Houston, Oklahoma City and Tulsa, two in Chicago, Boston, New Hampshire, Philadelphia, Des Moines, and Denver. Isn't it funny that for New Hampshire, they just put New Hampshire and didn't put the city? I wonder if they didn't know the city or they just thought New Hampshire was small enough. We'll just put New Hampshire. And then it says in October, Tony Nathan will be attending the National Convention of Theta Sigma Pi or Phi, whatever. I'm not good with that. I was never in a sorority. And I want to stick Michael's comment on the screen if I can, because I like when we, people are adding, whoop, get back up here. Here we go. So you guys can see some of the information Michael is relating, having to do with the San Francisco, I'm assuming is S SFB. Is that, um, in California? All righty. That is very interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Michael. So it's uh, continuing. Uh, as a member of that organization, Tony hopes to be able to gain considerable media exposure. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. Uh, oh, San Fernando Valley was SSB. Okay. For the Hospers Nathan campaign via her efforts. Plans are being laid to have Tony appear in other states while on her trip. Colorado, New Mexico, possibly Michigan, New York, and Massachusetts. Press coverage to date has been good. And there has been. I've been doing some research on newspapers.com, thinking maybe I'll do some episodes with some news clippings, um, if you guys would be interested in that. 
Jeffrey St. John had a note on New York Party's activities and his comments on the national radio program Spectrum. Human Events carried an item recently. I've been looking for copies of Human Events and I cannot find that anywhere. It must have been a rare publication. And our advertising agency, John Ziegler, Inc., and I'm putting Michael's um, comments on the screen for everybody to enjoy. Uh, John Ziegler, Inc. in New York is working on possible national TV appearances and getting free ad space. All in all, things have gone exceedingly well, and our only limitation is a short of a funds. Isn't that always the case? So send your contributions to the campaign fund today. All righty. Recommended Libertarian Publications. Many people who have joined the LP from outside the movement have asked us to recommend publications they can read to learn more about libertarianism. David got a bit salty in early issues of LP News, and I kind of love it. It like, reminded me of me. Um, I think myself and David Nolan would have gotten along. I could be flattering myself, but he seemed like a man that was not afraid to speak his mind and tell people to go fuck themselves if it was necessary. So here's um, David. While there are many of value, parentheses, and a lot of no value, tell us how you really feel, David. We'd recommend the following four as the best of the lot. So reason is one of them. Outlook, and they considered Outlook, which was published by Walter Block, we learned earlier in this same, this evening. It says it's a half notch below reason. A is A newsletter, which I've never seen a copy of, but I've seen some of them for sale, but none of them yet in this time frame, which is why I haven't bought any of them. Uh, and, and David says about A is A, in less than a year has become the place to keep track of what's going on in every sector of the movement. No discernible bias in favor of any one libertarian dogma. And that kind of surprises me because with that title, you would think it would be heavily, heavily objectivist. And then the Libertarian Forum. And I like what he says here. He's, again, David, tell us how you really feel. Is a lively, timely letter of commentary on everything under the sun from an anarchist viewpoint. The forum is highly mercurial we find many of its analyses off base. But the good stuff, which constitutes the majority, is so good, we'd recommend it anyway. He basically was telling Murray, wasn't Murray Rothbard the, uh, running the Libertarian Forum at that time? Basically telling him some of his stuff sucked. Love you, David. Okay. Let me see what else we have remaining here. And um, we always do the political perspective as a bonus episode, even though the one this month is really short and I think we could do it. I like doing it as separate because that way I can look up some more stuff and just concentrate on the, the, the outside of the LP politics. So we will not be doing that this episode. We'll do it as a bonus, but it, it'll come very soon. So we're going to go to the very last page. Because that is going to be our bonus. Come on now. There we go. Last page. With the cute little, uh, cute's probably not the right word, but I think it's cute. The cute little laissez-faire uh, logo on the bottom there. Libertarianism, now available in paperback. Dr. Hosper's brilliant treatise is now available in a high-quality paperback edition, especially identified on the cover as a campaign edition. Huh. I have that book, but I don't think I have the campaign edition. Now, I, I've mentioned this before, that um, the 50th anniversary of that book is coming out, and I am highly honored to have two essays that will be published in that book. I, that is an extreme honor. Okay, other new material available. In addition to Dr. Hosper's book, we have several other new goodies. 
We have in stock copies of Where the Money Went, an expose of the bureaucratic, ugh, my tongue gets tied sometimes, bureaucratic wastefulness, totaling $180 billion, chair, by Willis Stone, chairman of the Liberty Amendment Committee. And the Liberty Amendment is endorsed in the platform, as we discussed. I probably will try to pick up these books. Second, the new leaflet, McGovern, The Dangerous Decoy. Ha, huh, I would love to get that for the bonus episode. Wouldn't that be fun? Designed to reach conservatives who are teetering between Nixon and libertarianism. And third, a new campaign leaflet will be available in about two weeks. It'll have info on both the LP and the Hospers Nathan ticket. I might have that. I don't know. I'll have to see. Other people, though, might have that. I would imagine this is something that's pretty widely distributed. And finally, the Illinois LP has copies of the blue leaflet, leaflet promoting the LP, a very good piece available at one cent per copy. I've never seen that, I don't think. Then it says, Clark letter to appear in Playboy. Oh, I might have an excuse to go looking for an old copy of Playboy. Now, you guys, I know someone out here has some vintage Playboys, okay? If you can look in the 1972, I know I can keep you anonymous if you don't want to admit you got a stash of some, you know, you know, old school Playboys, but I would like to see this letter from Ed Clark. So Ed Clark, National LP Vice Chairman, is tentatively a ske scheduled to appear in the Playboy Forum section of the November issue of Playboy. Okay, somebody out there, give it up. I know you got the November 72 Playboy. The letter describes the reasons behind the formation of the LP and summarizes our statement of principles and platform. I've got to see this. It's about one column in length. Notes of thanks. Two people who deserve salutes for going above and beyond the call of duty for the LP are California Chairman Bill Sussel, who has been doing an outstanding job as Dr. Hosper's campaign manager, and Taya, Taya Boyles, wife of LP Treasurer Pip Boyles, who has taken on the thankless job of... Search, what, is it in there? The images, LP News, 72. Oh, you're doing what I, you're, you're just putting up what I'm doing. Okay, gotcha. I thought maybe you had the L, the Playboy thing there. I was getting really excited. Um, so she's now the circulation manager for LP News. Okay. Four new life, life sustaining members. Remember, they used to have both life members and life sustaining members. We don't have those categories anymore. We just have life members. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming that a life member would be like a one-time payment and a life sustaining is you make the one-time payment and you also commit to like a monthly donation too. I don't think that would be a bad idea to have now. So much gratitude is also due to four individuals who have become life or life sustaining members of the LP in the last month. Our fifth and sixth lifers are Vincent Drozdick of Massachusetts, currently with the Army in Berlin, and Ms. Jean McGuire of Colorado. Our second and third life-sustaining members are Anatoly Arutunov of Oklahoma and Joan Kickle or Keikel of New York. Anyone care to bring the total of life and life-sustaining life members up to a nice round of 10? And I'm going to stick this comment up here from Michael Morrison. Um, I did not know about a Penthouse Magazine article. So now you guys are giving me excuses to go shopping for some old school uh, softcore porn. <laughs> not that I mind. I'm just saying, you know, I like good porn with the rest of them. Okay, continuing. Campaign contributions are tax deductible. Has that always been, is that old? Like, they're not tax deductible now, are they? Is this an old thing? 
says you may not have realized it, but you can keep money out of Uncle Sam's pocket by putting it into ours. That has to have been repealed. Anyone who's up on campaign finance, let me know. If you contribute to the Hospers Nathan campaign, you can deduct half of the amount you contribute up to $12.50 for a $25 contribution from your income tax payment next year. And he goes on to explain $25 for a 50 contribution on a joint return. Oh, so I guess it's up to $50 uh, taxes, whatever. Um, or you can claim the full amount up to $50 for an individual or $100 on a joint return. I don't think that is still the case. Obviously, if you're in a tax bracket below 50%, the former is more advantageous, while the latter is better if you're in a 50% plus bracket. A rare opportunity to rip off Big Brother. Well, it's not ripping him off. It's keeping him from ripping you off, but whatever, I'm not going to quibble. Oh, and I love this advice here. We still do this today. Um, Sam Goldstein, former um, LNC at large, who I miss dearly on the LNC, um, does this all the time. So I'm going to encourage you guys to do this. They say, don't throw away that envelope. Next time you get a fundraising letter from some obnoxious politician, parentheses, is there any other kind? Don't waste that postage paid return envelope. Send him some choice piece of LP literature. We particularly recommend Dr. Hosper's 4th of July speech and McGovern, the dangerous decoy. As Arlo Guthrie would say, if 50 people a day do it, they'll think it's a movement. A lot of LPers do when they get in those fundraising letters, send copies of the platform. Or really stuff the envelope with all kinds of LP stuff. I would encourage you to do that. And the last thing. Valuable data in political almanac. LP member Ann Turner of California sends word of a new book that should prove of value and interest to LP members. Called the New Almanac of American Politics. I will look for that. It is by Michael Barone, G, I'm never going to pronounce that last name, Uji, Uji Fisa. I hate mangling people's names. Names are important. And Douglas Matthews and published in paperback by Gambit. Price $4.95. Contents include data on congressional districts, voting patterns, and ratings. Okay. So let me uh, go to... Give me one second here. Yay! See, I'm learning this program. You guys need to be proud of me. That is it for at least this, unless anybody's got any questions they want to put in chat, any chit-chat. So the next thing you can look forward to is the political perspective, which should be soon, maybe even tomorrow or the next day, unless... I can find a copy to buy of that dangerous decoy pamphlet, and then it will wait for that. And we'll probably do the David Nolan interview by the Abe something or other that I mentioned. Um, you want to know what? Hold on one second. It's really freaking bugging me who that... Well, no, I'm not going to do it. You guys got to say in chat... Can, don't go, oh, look, a squirrel, you know, please. Just You guys got to keep me on track. So I don't see any further questions or comments. Michael, I'm so glad you joined us tonight with all of that additional information. It makes it so much more rewarding. This is supposed to be a group learning experience, so I obviously do appreciate people who watch afterwards. And I always give you the fair warning of, the the begging that comes next but i always have to close out my broadcast with this because it's necessary for me to continue to do this work but if you um I appreciate it if you stay and listen but if not i will see you next time and here we go i would love it if you would hit the like button if you would also subscribe please please subscribe and if you could share this episode it helps 
not just me get a further reach because I'm trying to work towards, you know, getting the minimum view hours on YouTube, but it spreads the word about the party. And that's more important. If you would like me to do more of this work and be able to buy materials that I share them with you guys, please become a patron. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month, though the average is usually $5 a month. I know everyone is hurting. But I can tell you, if you want to give me a Christmas gift, becoming a patron, you'd make me very, very happy. You can do that on Patreon or on Subscribestar, as it says there on the screen. Also, in the show notes below on YouTube, but not on, obviously, Facebook, because there's no show notes in Facebook, there is information on if you wanted to send me historical items. My mailing address is there. I've had people send me a ham before. I enjoy a ham like anybody else. So there's also that. <laughs> it was Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold sent me a ham. And also there is a link down there for my Amazon affiliate link. If you click that link and then do your shopping in that same session, anything you get during that session will count towards my affiliate and it doesn't cost you a damn thing, and you could help me out. So that would be awesome, and also my PayPal and, and all that other stuff. If you are a financial supporter of the, of the show, you do get some bonus content. Right now, I am doing a book reading, not reading, that's not the right word because that would be copyright violation too, even though I don't believe in copyright, but some, most people do, doing like a book review or a book discussion of uh, Jim Gray's, a, a Judge Jim Gray's book, All Rise. And that is published on Subscribestar and Patreon for patrons only. And I will be going through other books that will not be on here. and We'll get into some heavy philosophical conversation. So even the dollar a month, um, patrons do get access to that material. So thank you, everyone. Have an awesome holiday, whatever it might be that you celebrate, be it Festivus, be it Christmas, whatever, I, you know, Kwanzaa, whatever, uh, Ramadan, whatever. Have a happy holiday, and I will be talking to you guys soon. Have an awesome night. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business Not because they wanna